Let's talk about we have uh, limited crowds, which is great. And um, Winter is Coming was a huge one for us. I think we had almost 1,000 people, like you said. Just yeah, we, I think we had 1,100, 1,080 paid. Which yeah. felt like Madison Square Garden. But the real moment, which was one of the biggest pops that I've seen in our company pre-pandemic or post, was the, was the arrival of Sting. And that was just, I mean, you had mentioned it to me a few weeks prior, and that just came out of nowhere for me. I was like, really? Sting? So I don't know what you can and can't say, but how did you come up with this and kind of make all of this happen? Just uh, I had a prior relationship with Sting, and he didn't reach out to me until his agreement had expired. But uh, of course, right? he, he uh, you know, I knew him, and he has a great son, Stephen, you know, Stephen Jr., Stephen Borden, who was a great tight end at Kentucky, and is a really very nice young man. And he tried out for the Jags, and he'd had a knee injury. And also, I don't think they utilized him enough at Kentucky, frankly, because he was a good player and definitely somebody who deserved a look in the NFL. And we tr he had a great tryout with us. And I think if he'd come in healthy, you know, he, would, he could have had a good chance to be a good NFL player. And he's a really nice person, too. And I had talked to Steve back then, probably like five, over five, six years ago almost. And uh, so I've known him a long time. He's a great person. And when he became available, it made all the sense in the world. And I thought it would be a great to sign Steve to an agreement to come in. And, uh, you know, we talked and we're, now we're doing exactly what I wanted to do and uh, what he wanted to do. So I think it's worked out great. It's been great for us. And he's really happy, too. I can speak in for him coming in. He's been really optimistic and he's just having, I think, I really believe a good time. The promo that uh, Sting and Darby did this week. Hoodlums. Now, they're hoodlums. A, Darby's a hoodlum and Sting's a hoodlum too. It's great That's stuff. That's great. We're not hoodlums. Well, Darby, yeah, he, he's a hoodlum. He came up with that, and it's just trying to ask him to be creative, giving him the situation, putting him in a situation, and asking him what would he say and do in this situation. And that was what Sting and Darby would do, and that was awesome, and that was them. I just asking him to do that interview and putting it there and saying, this is you, this is your response to this but here, situation. But here's something, though, that, that – you don't get in WWE, and I'm not saying it in a bad way because it's just the way it is there. But the creative freedom, I think it's something that everybody who comes from there to here, and, and I'm, I, I had the New Japan buffer, which was kind of leading me to you. We're like, wow, this is actually. But if you look at Mox or Hager or Brody or Miro or Sting coming from that world, FTR, you're almost forced to think more for yourself and collaborate more with you. Uh, rather than having stuff given to you. And I think it, at first you're in a little bit of shock. Matt Hardy, like, I can really just come up with my own shit? Like, yeah, do it. Yeah. And I think Steve Sting is starting to feel that, like, wow, like, I can actually call him a hoodlum and smash a window and I don't have to ask permission because this is the right thing to do. And you're very open to ideas. There's a few ideas that you, you don't like, but most of the stuff that I've come up with, and a lot of it has been out there from – a dance scene, a song and dance to freaking Mimosa Mayhem, you go you go with it, which to me is a really big deal because a lot of guys in your position don't do that. What is it that has, that gives you such an open mind to allow everybody to be as creative as possible without really putting a lot of your own, you know, restrictions on it? I think it's important that, like, we all point in the same direction. We know where we're going with the stories. We know where we're going with the shows but that we all get together and feel good about it because the last thing I want is like a wrestling show where I'm putting words into your mouth and I'm telling you how to talk in a way that is not going to come off believably. And I've seen way too much of it on wrestling television. And so that's why I just get with you guys and try and point everyone in a positive direction. And we have great resources for people too. There's For a person like Sting, who has an incredible wrestling mind, it's just important to turn that part of his brain back on that he hasn't right. been using in a while. And for him and Darby, who's already such a creative genius and creative filmmaker, putting them together, oh my goodness, the stuff is going to be idea. great. Thank you. And putting Darby up in the rafters and it's paid off and, and it's great and they are doing great stuff together already. And turning these guys loose, I can't wait.